Hey, Garrett Brill here. The other day I posted some pictures out on Facebook of this component that's under test, this rain shield component, and uh, it raised quite a few questions and I came to realize that uh, not only do they not really understand what the purpose of this, but a lot of folks out there that are flying the M200 series don't really realize uh, their limitations of flying in the rain and, and what it means. And so I want to kind of uh, show you the math behind it and then we'll talk about this at the very end. All right, so let's go over here and kind of show you the homework behind this. Um, the intake, so well, first let's go to the IP, IP rating. Um, as most people know, before they ever buy an M200 series, that's one of the selling points that's IP rated 43. IP stands for ingress protection, as you can see there. And so what does that actually mean? If you go and look up the IP rating, IP43, you have solids, and basically, yes, we're going to keep out uh, the most of the solids. We're worried about the dust and that kind of stuff. But in this case, we're talking about water, and it's protected from water spray less than 60 degrees from vertical. Now, notice that didn't say uh, Texas-sized raindrops that fill up half of a five-gallon bucket each, right? It's, it's water spray. So <clears throat> what's part of the original DJI design to help to protect from ingress of water into the fuselage and, and getting on the components. Now, as you might understand, if water does get in there, it can cause uh, unfavorable issues uh, that we don't even really want to talk about, but I'll let your, your imagination run amok there. So what we have is on the outside, we have a uh, fine mesh screen. Now that fine mesh screen uh, will not only keep uh, dust and stuff like that, but uh, you know, it'll also help take your large raindrops and break them into something the size of water spray, uh, what the ingress protection is designed for. Obviously, you want to keep that intake clean. I can't, it goes, that goes without saying. On the inside, it looks like this. There's louvers, and they're shaped kind of like troughs, um, and they slope outwards so that if a water drop were to come in here, that it would run outwards and away from the aircraft rather than coming inside of the fuselage. I'm going to slew over here for just a second oops a little too far and I'm gonna put a flashlight on the grill here so that you can kind of see real time there we go real time just exactly what we're seeing in the picture is the same as if I show you this on the aircraft right so we'll come back over here and get back to to this okay so now that we know what I, the IP rating is, what it means, and what's on the aircraft to help get uh, keep water out. What does the IP rating mean as far as speed? Now, this is something that, in my personal opinion, uh, DJI probably should have published this, uh, and not many people are, are very well aware of it or how to calculate it or anything else. So hopefully after this, we all know what it means, and we all kind of have in the back of our head what it means. So what I have to, to calculate this, now I know a lot of people hate math, that's what I do for a living, um, I'm an engineer, and so I've kind of done the homework for you and I've even put pictures for those that even don't like numbers. Um, so here's what we have. So IP rating is 60 degrees from vertical, so vertical would be 90 degrees, 60 degrees from it would be down here at 30 degrees. Now anybody that's driven a car in the rain understands that as you increase speed, the angle that that raindrop hits the windshield also changes, right? It's no longer coming straight down or, or whatever angle is coming. It comes at a much sharper angle, right? It's the same thing here, and that's what we need to know is how do we calculate, how do we attribute that 60 degrees from vertical to some kind of speed of the aircraft, okay? Now, there's a few things that we kind of have to take as a given, and one of them is going to be rain velocity, right? Now, raindrop fall, falls at almost perfectly at 20 miles an hour. If the raindrops are smaller, bigger, it can fluctuate a little bit, but that's gonna, we're just gonna keep that a constant, okay? Uh, then we have aircraft velocity. That's the one that we have control over and that's the one we need to know. We also have wind speed because wind speed is going to change the way that you fly. Now, people go, well, yeah, but into the wind, against the wind. Well, think of it this way. At some time when you're flying, you're gonna fly into the wind. So you can just pretty much consider wind speed as wind speed. Uh, you know, if you know for a fact and you're really good, yeah, when you're flying with a tailwind, you can adjust and then fly headwind and adjust. But 
you know, you're, you're kind of pushing it there uh, whenever you do that stuff. So let, anyway, let's get to the, to the actual velocities. Um, so again, we're trying to keep this, the way I, this is calculated is by taking the arc tangent of this velocity vector and this velocity vector, right? And again, I know some people just barfed on their cell phone, but um, that's how you calculate it. So let's take and push this up to 20 miles an hour, okay? So now you can see our angle is 45 degrees. So we're still okay there. Let's go to, uh, we'll, just, we'll just go to, as I already know what the speed is, we'll go to 34 miles an hour, okay? 34 miles an hour, and remember, this is less than, it does say equal to, it says less than. So right there, you're right just under 60 degrees of your impact angle of your raindrops to the aircraft, okay? So, now that's under perfect conditions. Well, you're like, okay, so what if there's a little bit of a wind? It's really pretty simple. You just subtract uh, the wind speed from your velocity and that get, or subtract the wind speed uh, from that. So if you have a 10 mile an hour wind, uh, then the, your maximum speed is going to be 24 miles an hour. And I'll just show you. So we'll put in 10 mile an hour wind here. Now you can see we're above 65 or above 60, I mean. And then here we'll have to reduce our wind speed down to 24 miles an hour, or our, our aircraft speed down to 24 miles an hour. Now you can see we're below that. Now, one thing I want to be pretty clear on, when I say wind speed, a lot of, uh, a lot of public safety especially is like, okay, well, we have wind speeds of 20 gusts into 30. No, no, this is, the wind speed is going to be the gusts. So if you have gusts up to 30, that means that for some of the time you don't have rain getting inside the aircraft, but every time it gusts, you've got puddles going inside the aircraft. So if you have gusts up to 30, your wind speed needs to be considered at 30, which of course would then bring you down to, um, well, if we take and say you have gusts up to 30 miles an hour, then of course, Your, your maximum aircraft velocity is going to be four miles an hour, okay? All right, and for that, for the so what that means also is if it's raining and you have winds that gu are gusting above 34 miles an hour, you should not fly, okay? So there's your limitation factors, all right? So let's get go over to the component real quick of, of the, rain shield let's see where did i put that thing there we go so here's the the rain shield uh some of the things that i like about it um, is a it'll keep it'll help protect uh, rain from actually directly striking the grill here and pushing into those louvers uh, the next thing is that the, one of the concerns is okay you have a raindrop that bounces say off of this platform right here on your gimbal plate and then you can get sub particles that would then go up and start striking this thing at a slower velocity but still it has a deflector see if i can get that in it has a deflector right here uh, that sits just a few centimeters off of off of here that means that it would actually drive the rain back down and away from there so even even if you have some something bouncing off this gimbal plate and then the last is there's a seal right up here and the idea is is that there's even a concern of just overwhelming this mesh here Whenever you have rain being driven by the rotor wash off of the fuselage, off the fuselage, and down here, right? So what this does is form a seal along here that'll then push, have the rain driven around the outside, which is fine. We just want to keep it away from this grill as much as possible. Um, this thing has a couple of shapes on the side <clears throat> that are little parallelograms, and as most people know, if you look right here on the side, there's a little par parallelogram. And all that it does is you take and put up here and you kind of put in one side and it kind of snaps into the other and then it's nice and firm and tight and uh, and that's how it fits. And then right up here, again, that's where your foam sits there and forms that seal. So there it is. It's not fully tested. Still needs to fly in actual rain. Uh, haven't had any, but uh, it's been tested in, in some heat, flying in the heat and uh, some other environments and, and flying in like water sprinklers, but that's still not exactly the same as the rain. So anyway, hopefully this helps and uh, both information and also let you know what this component is a little bit better too. Uh, by the way, FYI, I, I do not sell anything. I don't sell drones. I don't sell parts. I don't sell anything. Uh, I believe Fly High USA and uh, Firecam and a few other 
uh, DJ Enterprise dealers will be selling these, but uh, I'm not sure all who, so you'll want to call and see if they are. So anyway, talk to you later. Bye.